You had to know I was going to do this one. Jeez, for a dude, this guy talks about abortion a lot. Hey, are you saying men can't have babies? What are you, some sort of transphobic bigot? Is it consistent to be personally pro-life, but politically pro-choice? That is, can one believe that abortion is morally wrong, perhaps even seriously morally wrong, and yet also hold that abortion should be legal? Or is this an illogical, self-contradictory position? Along similar lines, can you hold that abortion should be safe and legal, and yet also hold that it should be rare? If you believe that zygotes and fetuses have no moral rights, or that a mother's right to bodily autonomy overrides those rights, then of course you're going to believe that abortion should be legal, and that it would be wrong to criminalize it. But it's much less clear that you can believe that abortion is morally wrong, perhaps even seriously morally wrong, and yet still believe that abortion should be legal. Although this sort of moderate pro-choice position isn't as popular as it used to be with the rise of shut-your-abortion-style activism, it represents a classic pro-choice position that used to be endorsed by mainstream pro-choicers, including Hillary Clinton, who actually coined the phrase safe, legal, and rare. Although Clinton and the Democratic Party more generally have since dropped the rare qualifier in their position, I think it's still worth asking whether this more moderate pro-choice position is actually tenable, since I think a fair number of rank-and-file pro-choicers still find it to be an attractive position. But in order for this position to be tenable, it has to at least be consistent. Conservative commentator and polemicist Ben Shapiro has argued recently that it's illogical to hold that abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. And pro-lifers more generally have always argued that there's an intractable tension between being personally pro-life, but politically pro-choice. If only there was some guy with a YouTube channel who addressed exactly these sorts of issues. Let's get right into it. Here's a clip in which Ben Shapiro makes his case that the safe, legal, and rare position is illogical. The, the original position was safe, legal, and rare. Right? You recall, Hillary Clinton said this back when she was first lady of the United States. The way she articulated abortion was safe, legal, and rare. Here's what that sounded like. We can support a woman's right to choose that makes abortion safe, legal, and rare and reduces the number of abortions. Okay, well that happens to not be the position of the Democratic Party today. First of all, that was never logically tenable, right? If you want something to be safe and legal, then your suggestion is that there really isn't anything morally wrong with the act that's, that's taking place. If abortion is not morally wrong, then why should it be rare? So if you want it to be safe and legal, then why exactly should it be rare? Obviously, once you say it should be rare, you're acknowledging that there is a moral wrong that is being done at some level. And therefore, the case for it being legal is actually a lot weaker, particularly when what you're talking about is not some sort of consensual behavior. You're talking about the taking of an unborn life. The basic argument here seems to go like this. Whatever reasons you have that are sufficient to justify the claim that abortion should be rare also provides sufficient reason to think that abortion should be illegal. If abortion really is a serious moral wrong, in particular if it involves depriving a distinct, morally significant being of its life, then it should be illegal in addition to being rare. It makes little sense to hold that it should be rare for this reason, but not illegal for the very same reason. I think there's something to this line of argument. If the reason you think abortion should be rare is that you think it's a serious moral wrong, that it kills a distinct morally significant being, a being that's as morally significant as you and me, then it's indeed quite hard to see why abortion should also be legal. Pro-lifers are fond of drawing analogies to slavery on this point. They say it makes little sense to say slavery is a serious moral wrong, and yet that it also should be legal. I mean, just imagine someone saying they're personally against slavery, but they think it would be wrong to interfere with the rights of others to own slaves. If slavery really is a serious moral wrong that involves inflicting harm on distinct human beings, that is, if it involves serious and unjustified externalities, then it should be illegal as well as rare. In other words, the more seriously wrong you think abortion is, the more logical pressure you're under to think that it should be illegal. In order to avoid Shapiro's argument here, one would need a reason that is sufficient to justify why abortion should be rare that isn't also sufficient to justify why it should be illegal. Along similar lines, one would need a reason that's sufficient to justify being personally pro-life, that is, believing that abortion is morally wrong, that isn't also sufficient to justify being politically pro-life, that is, thinking that abortion should be legal. Accordingly, it won't do to simply deny that abortion is morally wrong. If you think abortion is morally acceptable, then you're not even personally pro-life. Moreover, if you don't think that abortion is morally wrong, it's hard to see why you should think that it's rare. I mean, I suppose you could think it should be rare because you're worried about decreasing populations, but that would also put logical pressure on you to think that abortion should be illegal. By my lights, there are three strategies that hold some promise of threading the needle here. The first is to hold fixed the claim that abortion is seriously morally wrong, as morally wrong as killing you or me, and so should be rare for that reason, but also to hold that, nevertheless, there are overriding reasons against banning it. 
The idea is that the serious wrongness of abortion is sufficient for thinking that it should be rare, but not sufficient for thinking that it should be illegal. How could this work? Note that it won't do here to say that society is unfair to women, or that it's not set up to take care of pregnant women and mothers, even if that's true. Remember that the present strategy is assuming that having an abortion is as seriously morally wrong as killing a born human being. And we don't think that difficult circumstances, even disproportionately difficult circumstances, are sufficient to justify letting mothers kill their newborns or young children. Here's one potentially promising way to deploy this strategy. Suppose you believe that laws are justified solely on instrumental grounds. That is, they're justified solely in terms of the good they can produce and the evil they can prevent. And suppose you were convinced that laws against abortion would have no effect on the rates of abortion whatsoever. Instead of lowering the rate of abortions, such laws only serve to make abortions less safe. If you held all of these propositions together, I think you could consistently say that abortion should be rare, but also legal. And you could say that you're personally against abortion, but you're not in favor of banning it. Abortion should be rare because it's seriously morally wrong. But laws against abortion aren't justified because they only bring about harm and don't bring about any offsetting good. Now, how plausible all these assumptions are is another question altogether. To take just one example, I personally think it's very hard to believe that laws against abortion don't lower the number of abortions that take place. These studies that compare the rates of abortion in pro-life and pro-choice countries often compare apples to oranges. It's just very likely to me that the differences in numbers here of abortions have everything to do with confounding factors like economics, access to contraception, and good health care. But at this stage, we're after consistency, not plausibility. And I do think that you can consistently hold with these assumptions that abortion should be rare, but also that it should be legal. And I think these assumptions would also give you a consistent way to be personally pro-life, but politically pro-choice. Of course, these assumptions would need to be defended, and I leave it to you to decide whether this can actually be done. The second strategy for threading the needle here is to hold that abortion is morally wrong, but not as seriously morally wrong as killing you or me. This makes it easier for other factors to outweigh the wrongness of abortion when it comes to deciding whether it should be illegal. And it also makes sense why such a person would want abortion to be rare. There are many actions we judge to be morally wrong, but not so seriously morally wrong that we take ourselves to be justified in curbing individual liberty by banning them. Even when these actions harm other people, and especially when there are costs attached to criminalizing them. So, for example, most of us think that adultery is wrong, but many of us would be uncomfortable banning it or imposing civil or criminal penalties on adulterers. Or take hate speech. Most of us think hate speech is vile, wrong, and harmful to other people. But many of us, at least those of us here in America, think it would be wrong to ban it or criminalize it. So the strategy here is to argue that abortion is bad or wrong, but not more bad or wrong than these sorts of actions. And it makes sense to say you'd want such actions to be rare, but also legal especially if there are costs attached to criminalizing it, like maybe creating an underground abortion industry where abortion is very unsafe, or because of the great and disproportionate costs that fall on women, given how society is currently set up. The main challenge with this strategy when it comes to abortion is that abortion invariably involves killing, and we tend to think killing is serious enough that we're justified in curbing individual liberty to prevent people from doing it, even if it imposed costs on those who are prevented from killing. In order for this to work, then, I think one would have to argue that fetuses aren't as morally significant as you and me. They have to be morally significant enough to make abortion wrong so the person is justified in thinking that it should be rare. But they can't be so morally significant that they're justified in thinking that it should be illegal. I leave it to you to judge whether there's a plausible account of the moral value of fetuses that allows one to walk this tightrope successfully. The third strategy is to leverage the possibility of reasonable disagreement regarding the morality of abortion. Suppose you're fairly convinced that abortion is seriously morally wrong, but you also think it's possible for a reasonable person to disagree with you. I'm assuming the fact that there are reasonable people who disagree with you isn't enough to overturn your conviction that abortion is seriously morally wrong. Finally, and crucially, suppose you think it's morally wrong to force others to obey a moral code that a reasonable person could reject, either intrinsically or because of the backlash that will result from this. The resulting picture is one on which you are justified in believing that abortion is morally wrong, but on which you don't have sufficient reason to force others to obey that moral code. While this certainly would result in a consistent position, I'm not sure what to make of the central proposition that's responsible for the reconciliation here, namely that it's wrong to force others to obey a code that a reasonable person could reject. If you're really convinced that abortion is not only wrong, but seriously morally wrong, and abortion isn't something that takes place between consenting adults, but has an unwilling victim, does it really matter whether those who disagree with you are reasonable in doing so? Perhaps if you thought abortion was wrong but not seriously morally wrong, the fact that a reasonable person could disagree would be enough to outweigh that. But if you really thought it was seriously morally wrong, I'm not so sure that would cut it. It also might matter how many people disagree with you. For example, if a strong majority of Americans, say two-thirds, thought abortion was seriously morally wrong, it might be easier to justify following the democratic will of the people and banning it. I'm honestly not sure what to think of this strategy. For now, I want to note that, if it's successful, it would allow someone to consistently hold that abortion should be rare, but also legal. 
and to hold that abortion is morally wrong, but that it shouldn't be criminalized. Well, those are all the strategies I could come up with for trying to reconcile the very real tension between the claims that abortion should be rare, but also legal as well as the very real tension between being personally pro-life but politically pro-choice. They all involve taking on controversial assumptions, each of which has to be defended. If none of them seems adequate, perhaps we should conclude that there's an irresolvable tension in the safe, legal, and rare position, as well as between being personally pro-life but politically pro-choice. I'll let you be the judge. Until next time, see ya! It represents a classic pro-choice position that used to be endorsed by mainstream pro-choicers, including Hillary Clinton. <clears throat> I need a drink. I'll get it.